Welcome to Master in Market. My name is Grady Arno. I'm a program director here at Duke Fuqua School of Business, and I'm so excited to talk to John V. Clark uh, from the MMS class of 2022. John V., how are you today? Doing wonderfully. Can't complain. It's a beautiful day here in uh, in South Florida. How are you? I'm good. Uh, so let's start off with an introduction. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself to lead off? Sure. Um, I'm Janvi, as, as you already mentioned. Um, I graduated the MMS or the Master of Management program two years ago now. Um, since then, I've been working in consulting uh, as a management consultant, currently a senior consultant at my company. Um, on the personal side, I'm originally from New Zealand, um, so quite far from here, from a city called Tauranga. I moved to the US actually quite some years ago now. I was thinking about it the other day. Originally, because I was recruited to play college sports, so kind of got here for a different reason. Um, then worked a bit in financial services before um, deciding that um, it was time to get my master's. And then I guess the the rest is history. I guess we'll talk about the recent history a bit more. So I yeah. uh, won't foreshadow too much. Absolutely. What sport did you play in college? I played tennis. Awesome. Women's tennis at Duke is one of my favorite sports to attend. It's always very yeah, exciting. Yeah, it's so. amazing. That's so good as well. Um, yeah. Actually, one of my my good friends uh, was on the tennis team there that I met in the, the MMS program as well. So. Awesome. That's great. Um, so tell me a little bit about your role as a senior consultant at DHL Consulting. Sure. Um, I think there's two parts to it. I think in the last month or so it's changed significantly so maybe I can talk to first the more traditional senior consultant part and then more of this project manager side which I'm starting to get into now on the back end of my tenure so a senior, I started as a consultant your role as a consultant is essentially to be the content expert so you are a little less time client facing but you're really in the details so you're doing all of the excel modeling you know making the dashboards essentially doing all of the you could say the meat behind whatever you're recommending to the client. As a senior consultant, this role continues to kind of go deeper in this direction, but then you also begin to take on ownership of essentially certain deliverables. So you're essentially the one that's driving the topic. You're the one deciding what analysis to do, what the deliverable should be, how do we communicate it, who do we need to talk to, so on and so forth. How it works at DHL Consulting is after depending on on what you want and also how you're progressing at some point towards the middle of your senior consultant tenure you start to step into this uh, role which we call assignment manager it's closer to the project manager role the main difference is that as a senior consultant manager you have a lot more support from your partner your project partner in the normal consulting project setup and you're also a bit more heavy into the day-to-day, -day, so I still have analysis packages my, of my own, um, whereas a project manager usually has a bit more of a you know, senior team, and they have a lot of other responsibilities. That's, um, yeah. It's so great to hear that you're, you're developing more skills and being able to dive a little bit deeper into the project management side. So how does that affect your day-to-day? -day? What does that look like? And um, it, is it... I imagine it's very different than it was maybe a month ago. So if you could explain yeah. what it looks like now. Yeah, so, I mean, let's take today, for example. Um, there's this classic saying, I guess, in consulting that pretty much all you're doing is preparing for meetings. And I think this is very much true, actually. Uh, whether it's a meeting for a big meeting in two weeks or it's a meeting for a deliverable, you're always preparing for a meeting. So the kind of cadence of our week tends to be we have the client facing meeting with our with our customer or our you know project stakeholders on Thursdays usually towards the end of the week um so let's take today i have a daily stand up with my team in uh, i guess 49 minutes and then uh, we have a, a few things to make sure are finalized before we then have the run through of the presentation with our project partner kind of get him up to speed with everything that's happened this week what do we want his involvement in the client meeting to be? Get his input on certain topics, certain things that we, you know, need some need some support on, uh, and then mostly spending the afternoon finalizing the presentation, sending out the kind of pre-read before the meeting, so on and so forth. so. 
Um, in general, though, what I really like and why a big reason why I chose DHL Consulting is there's lots of other stuff um, on my agenda, too. So I am leading the consumer and retail practice um, for our external business. So there's also some business development tasks um, as well. Also maintaining relationships with previous clients who are often in the line of work we do return clients. So uh, a bit of bit of everything as well. That's great. Could you talk to a little bit about what kind of services DHL Consulting provides? And um, you've talked about why you ended up there, but what you were thinking prior to MMS and why you chose DHL Consulting? Of course. Um, in a nutshell, what we do at DHL Consulting is twofold. We have, on the one hand, the primary purpose of, of why the company exists is that we're the internal management consultancy for the group. So DHL is made up of five business units who do very different things and uh, also a very global company. So we have, I think, roughly 600,000 employees around the world and we support with any kind of traditional management consulting projects for country managers, global CEOs, um, you know, CFOs, so on and so forth. So this could be things, anything from m a due diligence, commercial IT, so on and so forth, to growth strategy, to market entry, should we enter this market, to, yeah, pretty much anything within this realm um, that relates to management consulting, reorgs, so on and so forth. Then on the flip side, we also have an external arm. Um, this is kind of alluding to the consumer and retail practice I mentioned a couple of moments ago. So we also do projects for customers or prospective customers of DHL. This is kind of the setup. Um, these customers is pretty much most companies within the Fortune 500. If you think about, um, you know, how much logistics plays a part in these global companies. So I think that's also really exciting um, working helping them with their more strategic topics as well. So worked with a um, couple of customers in the consumer and retail sector, currently working with um, a customer in the engineering and manufacturing industry. So those are kind of the two arms that we have. Awesome. And do you, before you're going to MMS, what did you think you wanted to do and how did you end up selecting DHL Consulting? Yeah, so I, I, I definitely wanted to do consulting, um, maybe skipping forward here a bit, but I think my first two roles were your traditional analyst roles out of undergrad, which it's a great experience. It's like the basics which you need, but I felt this kind of yearning for a more of a dynamic environment and also a bit less one dimensional because at the end of the day, going in as an entry level analyst, you have a very defined scope of work and you're kind of one cog in the big team and your input goes to someone else who makes it something else. And then finally, five people later, um, your work is really um, coming to fruition. So I definitely wanted to go into consulting. I remember clearly, um, I mean, consulting isn't a big thing in New Zealand, so I didn't hear about it growing up or in, in, in high school or anything, but I remember talking to one of my friends and uh, she told me about consulting and I was like, how can this be real? It sounds so mm -hmm. awesome. Like that sounds like exactly what I want to do. Um, so I, I remember that was, I guess, one or two years before um, I, I applied uh, to Duke and applying to Duke was uh, for this reason. Number one, I think the MMS is a great platform to kind of as a launching pad into consulting. I remember looking, you know, into consulting output. There was a lot of alumni that I spoke to beforehand as well. Um, so definitely was consulting going into the MMS. Um, I had a look at some other industries as well. I had some interviews in the product management field, um, but ended up going with consulting because I think, especially at the formative years of your career, it's so important that you expose yourself to enough things to make the right decision in the future for maybe we, where do you want to spend 30, 40 years of your career? And I think in consulting, especially in the company I'm at, I've got to see so much. And um, we're a small office, right? But we are part of a huge company. So if you really want to, if you're interested in something and you want to pursue it, you have the people around you the management team, they're happy to support you in that. So certain topics that I'm interested in, 
um, I put my hand up for, I kind of say, hey, can can I please be stopped on this? Can I please be stopped on this? Can I please be stopped on this? Even this, if it means more work for me, I would rather enjoy what I'm doing and work a bit more than be bored and work, work less. That's a personal thing though. Absolutely. That's fantastic. So great to hear that you're able to accomplish so much and uh, try out new things in your current role. So you mentioned uh, in your day-to-day -day that you work on a team. How big is that team and how did the MMS program or your time in athletics help you be part of a team? Yeah. Um, yes, we always work on teams. Uh, sometimes customers ask, well, why can't I just have the project manager and and why do I need to have consultants? But at the end of the day, I think a lot more can be accomplished together than could be individually. I think this is a kind of confounding idea that kind of ties all of these experiences together that you mentioned. So athletics, um, MMS, and then now working. I think within the team, in the project, I think what is so enjoyable about it and something also challenging is that people approach problems very differently and everybody has a very different skill set and a different strengths and weaknesses, right? I think the magic source you could say is when you're able to piece these together and find different ways to connect with people to get the best out of them. What motivates me, Some whether that be how do I communicate a task or how do I communicate like a work stream or analysis and what the outcome of it would be might be very different than what motivates someone else. And I think I've learned that the hard way um, in, in some moments, but I think it's also part of the fun. Um, I also think it's just, I don't know, thinking back to college sport days, right? I think it's a very unique way of connecting with people. Like some of my friends from my my tennis team, my college team, they will be friends for the rest of my life. And I feel like they know me in a very unique way. At work, it's obviously slightly different because you have a certain facade. I think you're also a bit older, but I think in the same sense, whether it be your immediate team or your project team, you're really creating these kind of strong connections through solving something together, you know, and there's always ups and downs during projects. So I think that I, I might've rambled a bit, but I, I, hope I, I, I tried to answer the question. Absolutely. That's great. Um, so in your day to day, there's a lot of things that you have going on. You're going to be in a meeting in a short period of time after this call. Um, then you have a lot of other things going on throughout the day. So how do you manage the multiple priorities that you have throughout a day and throughout a week um, to make sure that you're accomplishing the main goals that you have? Yeah, I mean, some people think I'm a little bit crazy because of this, but I I I love having multiple things on my plate. It's I think coming from um I think coming from my my undergrad days, I mean, half the day you're practicing, half the day you have you know, classes and all your other responsibilities. And there's something so satisfying about putting your head on the pillow at the end of the day and being like, I did this, 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 and this, and this, and tomorrow I get to do it all again. So I really, I love having those priorities. I think the challenge is, and something I've learned, is that it does impact other people because other people don't necessarily have to have the same outlook. So for example, on my team right now, now that I'm stepping into more of a leadership role, I need to make myself available to my team whenever they need my support and I need to give them visibility on what are the other things on my plate. Um, so that's just an example. A way that I've learned to do that is at the end of the day, there's always a input and a relative output. So this idea of effort and reward, I think sometimes now I've I've had to just say this is not worth the effort right now. This is something that, I mean, goes on to prioritization, right? Um, I think that's the basis of it. Um, so sometimes using time between projects to tick off um, many things that are kind of come up on my list, whether it be catching up with old clients, so on and so forth. And really at the end of the day, project comes first what brings more clients back and what brings more projects is good project work. So um, I think that comes first. Yeah, that's great. Um, could, before, so this is um, your second role at DHA Consulting. Could you talk a little bit about how you were able to get a promotion and move up in the ranking so quickly? Sure. Um, I think... In the beginning, there's always this apprehension when you start a new job, right? You're trying to find your place. You're trying to find 
what is the role really like at the end of the day? Someone's lying to you if they tell you that exactly the role you interview for is the job that ends up being your day to day. There's always a certain, you know, beautification that goes with the interview process. So I think in the first month, I mean, I really try, first month, should I say, I really tried to just get the basics down packed. So I had never worked in consulting, as I said, worked in financial services. It has many more dimensions consulting. So you have the Excel piece or the analysis or the numbers piece, which I felt comfortable with, but you also have the notorious slides, the notorious client meetings, um, many different aspects. So I think in the beginning, just focusing on getting the basics down and then with time, what I think has really helped me is developing an expertise. So when projects come up, people think of me and they think Janvi would be suited for this project. And this also helps you because then you get to do multiple projects, which kind of build along each other, if that's what you want, of course. Um, so I think for me, that's what has really helped. It's also helped me create good relationships with clients, which lead to, you know, being involved in business development, being involved in creating project proposals, so on and so forth, um, and really understanding at least not becoming too much of a jack of all trades, because I think that's a bit a bit the trap um, is being a jack of all trades, but trying to master at least a few topics, um, I think is always is always a good thing. And I think that's that's at the end of the day what's helped me. That's great. Seems like you have a really good culture and great um, company to work for. So could you talk a little bit about the culture at DHL Consulting and how does it compare to some of your previous experiences? Yes, of course. I think maybe I, I forgot to mention it um, on an earlier question. One of the coolest parts of DHL Consulting is I think the global nature. So we're one of three offices um, globally. We have a lot of collaboration. We also are a very international crowd. Um, and I, I really like that part. Um, I think this brings a lot of diversity. Um, I think the culture very much reflects this as well. Um, for example, the the Euros were going on and we have a couple of European colleagues and they put blockers in our calendars, essentially like Portugal versus Spain, I guess, will be on will be on will be on the like conference room TV uh, if anyone wants to to watch it during this time. Just examples of this. I mean, obviously nothing impedes uh what what work needs to be done but there's this real um you could say culture of we're all here for different reasons we're all from different places but let's try and get the most out of it and really pave our own path so i think that's a really nice culture also i enjoy working with with young people um as well i mean there's a lot of i mean obviously the project managers you know have families are older um naturally as as things progress in in careers but um, also working with um, fellow Duke alum, we've recently recruited uh, several and um, thankfully have one more coming uh, next next year. So just working around, you know, dynamic people with similar backgrounds and, you know, similar backgrounds, but not too similar that you, you can't learn anything, uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, what do you think the future looks like for you? Um, I've tried to stop predicting actually. Um, I, I think I, I read somewhere the other day, always, always prepare, but never predict. And I think that's a, so I don't want to, I guess, try and predict too much, but I think for now it's making the most out of this consulting experience, really, um, exposing myself to as many things as possible. I kind of have this, this short list in the back of a notebook somewhere of topics that I really enjoy, um, kind of solidifying those topics. And eventually I want to move into industry. So I want to, I don't want to be in consulting forever. That's something I, I know. Um, I think one of the downsides is that you, for example, my previous project, you're coming up with a growth strategy for a US based company. And you come up with this plan, you're really excited about it, you're very invested in it, you've gone through thousands and thousands of rows of data to get to something meaningful, but at the end of the day, you hand it over to someone else, and the success or failure may be due to your, you know, great strategy or great, you know, short list of, of areas they should focus, or it could be due to execution. So I think at the end of the day, I would like to get into industry, into business, into like a, one organization hopefully within the consumer and retail sector. So I think that's my, 
that's my uh, that's at least the direction my preparation is going. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, last question: What's one piece of advice you'd give to someone either trying to go into consulting or thinking about coming back to Fuqua for their master in management studies? Yeah, and I I apologize. I haven't. Um, I mean, in general, MMS. I haven't spoken to it a lot, but I I wanted to just say. It was such an awesome experience. It was one of the most, uh, one of the decisions I'm happiest about in my life that I that I went through with. I think from a professional standpoint, I was exponentially more well-equipped to add value to an organization and also get, get back from an organization. So learn after the program, I, I'm a little bit of a nerd, so I really enjoyed the classes. Um, I mean, I think the learning is is next to none. Um, so I I think 100% worth the investment if you're kind of on the fence about it. Um, in in my day to day, I'm I'm always thinking, you know, thinking back to and using things from classes, whether it be, you know, some coding system like uh, from the MSTEM classes or you know general general principles from from the others. So I mean, my my guidance and the guidance to me before I started was say yes, always say yes and and give it your best. I think if it goes a long way. So um that's my I guess that's my advice. Uh, both to oh. both to consulting and, and the master's program. That's that's so great. Thank you so much, John V. It's clear you're a master in market and we're so excited to see all that you you have accomplished and all you will accomplish in the future. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Grady. Great to speak to you again.